In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a WordPress website with a domain name on Rocky Linux. And this is going to be on top of an Nginx web server. I'm going to assume that you already have Rocky Linux in an Nginx web server installed. If you don't, I have a tutorial about that that you should check out first. But if you already have that, then you're good to go. Let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So I am logged into this IP address, which is indeed running Rocky Linux. And we can verify that look by looking at the etc OS release file. And I'm running Rocky Linux version. 8.5. So I already have, like I said, uh, a LAMP server, Linux, Nginx, MySQL, and PHP on this. So we can pretty much proceed with the WordPress install. Um, the one thing I want to make sure that we do, because we are going to be working with a domain name, is to make sure your DNS records are configured for that correctly. So what do I mean by that? So I'm going to assume that you have a domain name as well. Uh, my domain name is tonys.store. I got it from Namecheap. You can use any domain name registrar whatsoever. I don't care where you got it from. But what I want you to do is come into your DNS settings for your domain name and add two A records. One for the, the domain name itself, tonys.store, and that's going to point to the IP address of your server. And then one for www. Uh, dot Tony's dot store or whatever your domain name is and that's also going to point to that um, uh, IP address so make sure you do that initially and then we can proceed with the tutorial okay so what we're going to do is go into the var www directory and in here you'll see your you might see your CGI bin and HTML directory but what we're going to do is pretty much create another directory here for WordPress specifically. So um, I'm going to copy this just so I don't make any mistakes. Uh, and I'll have these commands down below for you too. So um, we're going to basically use the curl command to download the latest version of WordPress in this archive. And we're going to save it to a file in this directory called wordpress.tar.gz. So go ahead and execute that and you'll see that we end up with that file right here. So we can unpack that tar file with tar xf and then the name of the file wordpress.tar.gz and that will expand into its own folder right here. So we don't need that tar file anymore so we can remove that with rm wordpress.tar.gz and it's going to say are you sure you want to remove it? Yes, hit enter. And now it's a good idea if we look at the permissions of the WordPress directory, nobody owns it. So we want to uh, tell, wanna, there's a user associated with our web server called Nginx. So we want to give the ownership of that directory and all files under it to Nginx. So we can do that with C-H-O-W-N dash capital R for recursive. The user is Nginx. The group is also Nginx. And that's going to be everything under the WordPress directory. So now if we look at the permissions again, Nginx user and Nginx, Nginx group owns that directory. Similarly, let's work with the, the um, permissions for the files and folders under this directory. So uh, by recommendation of WordPress itself, they, they recommend um, for files. And let me just copy this too so I don't waste your time or make any mistakes like that. So for for directory types, okay, they recommend a 755 permission and this is going to basically uh, recursively make that change under all files underneath the WordPress directory. And then similarly for files, WordPress recommends uh, for the file type uh, permission 644. So let's go make that change as well. So as far as the WordPress install, that pretty much takes care of that. Let's work on the Nginx configuration. So let's go into the etc Nginx directory. And in here, there is a conf.d directory. And in that directory, there is your default uh, configuration file. What we're going to do is make our own configuration file. I'm going to be using the Vim text editor. Uh, feel free to use whatever text editor you're most comfortable with. So um, let's make a file called wordpress.conf. And I will paste in the configuration 
a basic configuration which you should be able to use as a template for yours as well. So you'll want to we're going to listen on port 80 which is the HTTP port. Our server name is simply going to be your domain name and the www version of your domain name. Uh, our root is going to be the directory that we are just working out of our www WordPress and inside of there uh, the 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 index file is going to be something called index.php. That's just standard for WordPress. So we have two location blocks, one for basically all non-PHP files and then one for PHP files. And the only thing that you should probably just make sure of, everything else could be the same, but just make sure that you have um, this, this on your system, that you have uh, this socket for PHP FPM existing. If not, you might have to do a DNF install PHP dash FPM. So let's verify that's the case. So let's just do an LS for that www socket. And we do have that. So we are good to go. Um, let's test out our configuration file with nginx dash T and it looks like the syntax is okay. And the test is successful. So that means we should be able to do a system CTL restart nginx to apply those changes and then just for good measure let's do a system ctl status nginx to make sure everything looks okay whoops added an extra t there and the server is still active and running so looks like it accepted our changes now as far as the database is concerned we have to tell or we basically have to set up a database for wordpress and then we'll tell wordpress about it later so let's go ahead and do that so we'll log into our MySQL server. You might have credentials for that. Um, so you can type that in. Uh, if you do something like MySQL-user, then the, your username, and then dash P, and then it'll prompt you for a password. But I don't have that set up on this system. So uh, let's go ahead, and I think I'll just do the copy and paste again. So we'll create a database and then you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine db underscore name and then I'll create a user uh, called db user and he can operate on this local host and his password is db underscore password. I don't recommend this as your password. Make it a, a stronger password than that. And then for privileges we will grant all privileges uh, for this database all tables which is the asterisk here, to this user on this machine. And then we can do flush privileges. And of course, the one time that I uh, type something, I make a syntax error, flush privileges, and then we can get out of the MySQL command prompt. Um, at this point, if we open up a, a, a web browser and go to Tony's Tony's dot store. We do have this um, error message that says your PHP installation appears to be missing the MySQL extension, which is required by WordPress. So there is a collection of um, PHP modules that we should install as well. And that's going to look something like this. So DNF install PHP MySQL ND, and then you have these other modules which are recommended by WordPress as well. So let's go ahead and install those with the DNF package manager. Uh, that's not too much space, 392 kilobytes. And with those modules installed, we can come back to our website, tonys.store, and we should bypass that error message this time and see the setup configuration. So let's go ahead and um, provide the database name, username, password that we did for our database a little bit ago. And we can put that information in here. So the database name was db underscore name. The database user was db underscore user. Password was db underscore password. And this was all on local host. So let's see if that works for us. And this says we're unable to write to wp-config.php. Now this is a permissions issue and we can fix that pretty easily by going back to the uh, var www directory. And in here, um, remember we were in here before looking at the ownership and the permissions of the WordPress directory. 
Well, this time there's something uh, that comes packaged with Rocky Linux called SE Linux. It's a secure, um, I'm not sure if I'm using the right terminology, but it's a secure module, just a bunch of security features that are built into the core of the operating system. And in order to allow, um, in order to allow, let me copy this and paste. Uh, we're going to issue this command ch con c h c o n, uh, which basically adds security context. It allows WordPress the permission it needs to uh, modify the files on the system under this directory. So uh, we're going to execute that, and we're going to run the installation again. Uh, basically, you're going to have to enter that database name again: db name db user db password and submit and that should get by that point and it does so we'll go ahead and run the installation so um site title tony's store username pick a username i'm gonna do tony teaches tech here's my password so i'll copy that my email tony teaches tech at gmail.com and then we will install wordpress so let's log in with those credentials. Tony teaches tech and then my password. And this will log us into our WordPress admin dashboard. So um, this, is, this is what our WordPress website looks like. It's running at this domain name. If you go back to the admin dashboard, which is accessible at wp-admin, uh, it's always a good idea after a fresh WordPress install to go to your site health. Now, there will be some issues here. Um, there's a couple, one or two more steps that we have to go through. It says the REST API encountered an error. There's this curl error, HTTP request failed. Um, something similar, curl error seven, curl error seven. Again, this is an issue, not an issue, just uh, SE Linux doing its job, but there is a workaround to allow SE Linux to play well with WordPress. So. Uh, for this fix, what we want to do is to execute this command. So we have set se bool. So we're setting a boolean value. If we execute that command and we come back into our site health, those critical issues go away. Then we just have these other issues, including your WordPress or your website doesn't use HTTPS. Uh, but I also I actually have a video about installing an a free SSL certificate for your WordPress website. And I also have another video, 15 important things to do after installing WordPress. So I recommend that you check both of those out. I will see you guys over there.